It's my pleasure to introduce our keynote speaker. She is Vice President in charge of Fun at Humor Advantage Incorporated and the author of six books on the subject of humor and joy. Recently, she was the recipient of the 2010 Women in Leadership Award by Empower Federal Credit Union, MVP Health, and WTVH 5 CBS News. She has appeared nationally on ABC TV and has taken her humor seminars to over 5,000 corporations and groups nationally. She is the proud mother of two grown children who have never been arrested, never been on Jerry Springer, and have finally moved out of the basement. Please join me in welcoming Yvonne Conti. enjoying all the good giveaways they were given. I always, hmm, I'll leave that right here. Uh, I always enjoy getting the free stuff. I walk in, I get my bag, I fill it up. And then I give it to my mother. These Italian women, they just love stuff that's free. But I'm here to talk with you about the positive power of humor, laughter, and joy. And how we can use humor, laughter, and joy in every aspect of our life at work, at home, and in the marketplace. And I start with a statement that says, pain is inevitable. It's the suffering part that's optional. And a lot of people look at that and they say, what are you talking about? If you're in pain, you're pretty much suffering. Where does the option come in? Well, do you know anybody that just loves to suffer? <laughs> Sit next to anybody like that? Maybe you left somebody like that at home or at the office. You know the kind of person that just can't wait to tell you every stinking thing that went wrong. I have an Aunt Frances like that. Now, Aunt Frances lives in Utica, New York, which I know can be across the bear in itself. But Aunt Frances complains about everything. Nothing has ever put her right. You go to visit her and you make the mistake of saying, how are you? And she tells you for the rest of the visit. You know people like this? Oh, you don't know what those kids did to my lawn with that motorcycle mud on the water. She goes on and on and you're like, oh, wow, what I asked for. She exhausts herself of all of her complaints. And the next morning, you can see the little wheels in her head spinning. She's trying to remember, what did I forget to complain about yesterday? She's just a little short Italian woman, about four feet tall, with a nose bigger than her head. She looks up at me. She says, Yvonne, I think I'm shrinking. Maybe someday you'll just disappear. <laughs> you have to find a way over, around, and through all those people and situations in our life that try to bring us down when we're doing everything we can to stay positive in this world today. So that's what this program is about. And I did a lot of research about laughter and how it affects us, and I found that little children laugh up to 400 times a day. And by the time we're just 45 years old, it's reduced to 15 chuckles. Well, if laughter and humor is so important to our mental and physical health, if it enhances business, if it helps us to make sales, if it keeps us healthy, then we need to figure out how in the world can, did we get from 400 to 15 and what can we do to get laughing again? And I think I figured it out. What's the first thing you do when you see a baby? Try to get the baby to do what? Sure, laugh. I've seen people who look pretty intelligent. Pick up a baby and act like a moron. Have you seen that? They pick up the baby and they go, <laughs> and the baby laughs at them. And they think they did something miraculous. They're looking at it, I made the kid laugh. We know that's just gas. But they think that they did something powerful by making the kid laugh. And their reaction teaches the child that laughter and humor is a good thing. And the child grows up and does silly, wacky things, and we just continue to promote that by saying, oh, what a good personality. God, you got a great attitude. And then that same child becomes nine years old, starts to act like a goofball, a nut job, a wacko. What do we say? <laughs> Knock it off. What is wrong with you? That's what my mother used to say. She said it so much that the first day of school, the teacher said, Stand in front of the class, say your name, and a little something about you. I stood in front of the class, a nervous wreck. I said, my name is Yvonne Conti, and there's something wrong with me. <laughs> Teacher wrote it down on a piece of paper, handed it to me. I took it to my mother. She read it. Dear Mrs. Conti, exactly what is wrong with Yvonne? She read the note, hit me in the head, and said, what is wrong with you? I'm telling me. But we erase and suppress that wonderful sense of humor that we're all born with and we become terminally serious adults. And that's what hinders just about every good thing in our life, the seriousness that we take. Now, I'm not diminishing anything that's going on in our world or in the economy. I know we're, we're, we're in tough times. 
But the more you can look at it with a, with a greater outlook, the better you will be. And the easier you will to get through it. And you know, I'm going to break away from my, my talk for a second to tell you about something that happened. Uh, the house across the street from me burned to the ground a couple of years ago. And you know, it was a horrible experience for the people, of course. They survived, and that's great, but they lost everything. But it was an amazing lesson for me, because I can't stand to pay my insurance. <laughs> but after that happened, and I saw how this insurance company took care of these people, how they came immediately and made sure that they had everything they needed to get back on their feet, I would, I, my insurance is the first one I pay now. It's amazing how, uh, how good that I mean, I'm not telling you the truth. I never appreciated insurance because nothing's ever happened to me, knock on wood, where I ever need it. But boy, knowing that it's there if I do, really came home and made an, an, an impression on me when I saw that house and when I saw what happened to the people afterwards. So what you do is an amazing thing. You don't sell insurance, folks. You sell peace of mind, and you sell uh, comfort and safety for families, and that's a good thing. So when I was talking to my dad, so I tell you that because I want you to think about the person I asked you to think about. Look at them a little more clearly this month. Maybe ask them some questions. Find out what that person lives and breathes for. What matters to them? Because you can only help people if you know what matters to them. What will they die for? What do they live for? What matters? When you find that out, then you can not only help them, but you can interest them in things that will, where you can work together better because you know what they're all about. Everybody was put on this earth for a reason. None of us were a mistake. And when you can find out what that reason is, you can work better with people, you can sell more eagerly to other people. You know, every relationship in your life will be better.